everyone, it's Rosette, and I'm back today with another decoding. This one is on John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum. We left John and Dog in Chapter 2, with John suffering the consequences of his actions. He has been excommunicado. Accounts payable, 11111 in one hour. John Wick excommunicado. Order 11111. And written on the screen, one hour. So between Winston giving one set that equals six and the accounts payable lady here giving the other, you get your Masonic 66. Remember what the 66 stands for. The Masons use it for two Star of Davids. Each Star of David has two triangles with three sides each. So 33 for each side and two of them would total 66. And here on a Master Mason's lapel, two triangles with 33 inside, two triangles like the two Star of Davids would total 66. And notice the swords on each. They remind me of the Game of Thrones chair. But instead of a Stark sitting on it, we have a good guy, John Wick. Also notice the account number given to John, 1111-11. So what do we have here? One final set of sixes. Account number 1111-11 equals 6. So we have the Masonic 66 and one more 6, which would be 666. So we can see who is behind the order against John Wick. He is fighting the beast system. They tell us no one is outside of the rules of this system. They can't have that. If John wins and he lives outside of it, it will inspire others to leave as well. Connected to the beast system would be the Church of Satan, which was founded in 1966 by Anton LaVey, who was Jewish, from the tribe of the Seed of the Serpent. And their favorite number is the 666. Now in John's account number, we also have 1111, which is 4, and 11, which is 2, so 42. You might recall that Gale put his name in the drawing for the reaping 42 times in the Hunger Games. He is the archer in that movie. And if you recall in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that the answer to the universe was... 42. Deep Thought is about to speak. Good evening. Good, good evening. Yes. 
The archer is the ruler of the arch, and this would be Christ. The rainbow arches at 42 degrees, and if we flip it, we get 24, which is the symbol for Sagittarius. And we know Sagittarius is Latin for archer. So indeed, John Wick is the archer in this series. And with art imitating life, we have Keanu owning a motorcycle company named Arch Motors. The archer owns Arch Motors. And so in chapter 3, it is time for the archer to take on the anti-archers. Prepare for war. Parabellum, John. John is excommunicado, or excommunicated, from the church. But it really isn't the church, is it? It is opposite of the church. The high table worships the moon eye, money. So they would be the anti-church, or the anti-Christ. First, we are shown the seed of the woman. Spiritual seed, versus material seed, all about the money, the moon eye, seed of the serpent. Our chapter begins with the pan of the Statue of Liberty, the androgynous statue of Columbia, also known as Isis. And what do we see in the background? Lightning striking. Luke 10:18, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Remember the French Masons brought the Statue of Liberty over from France. There is a mini version located in Paris. This is to show who really is in charge in New York City. The shot pans in and we see two clocks on a tower. Each has a hand on the five and a hand on the two, which are two sevens or seventy-seven. And we get the third seven just a few shots later. See here on the clock? Again on the five and again on the two, making seven. Seven, seven, seven is one of Crowley's favorite numbers. He was a Mason, a Satanist, a left-hand pather. Here he is in his Masonic garb. Notice it says Baphomet by his right ear. Under it, O-T-O, which is the initials for the Ordo Templis Orientis. 777 for Crowley. 666 for LeVay. If they were alive today, both would be working under the table, in service to the table. We then pan down and see John and Dog running. Notice the split of the red and blue. To me, this shows the war that is going on between the red, Team Christ, and the blue, Team Lucifer. It's like he's running on a marker here, like wherever he goes, he is bound to this system. He's running out of time. They have a file on him, but we all have a file, don't we? It starts from birth, when we are given a social security number. You are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, into a prison that you cannot taste or see or touch, a prison for your mind. Notice the star earring and the star tattoos on the other gal, fallen stars, and the gal riding John's bounty looks more like a he. I wouldn't be surprised. She is in pink. Remember what we said about the color pink in chapter 2. And this one has a very prominent jawline, male jaw. It's like the producer had a checklist. Tranny in movie? Check. Non-gender binary in movie? Check. John becomes enemy number one. Remember, Neo is an anagram for one. So Keanu's the one in both movies. Now, I'm assuming this T is for T-Mobile, but I can't help to notice the bright pink again, like in the Victoria's Secret store in Chapter 2. So to me, it looks like tranny squared. Subtle programming for us to accept this agenda. 
not to mention the show of materialism. Remember, the merchants are the same people behind the banks. And rain, being water, is an element associated with Lucifer. Like President Snow in The Hunger Games, and yes, John Snow in Game of Thrones. John was a Stark, or Star K, Star Kosher. So Wick is in the rain, running from the Star K's, the seed of the serpent. Tick tock, Mr. Wick, tick tock. He has dog dropped off at the Continental and runs to the library and asks the librarian the location of the 1864 book called Russian Folk Tales by Alexander Afanasov. Now why this book? We learn that Alexander is the Russian version of Brothers Grimm and we know that they were children's stories passed down from generation to generation. But do you know the real purpose of them? They were allegorical stories to warn children of the Jew. You can see the witch has a hooked nose and pointy chin. The troll under the bridge who stole the money from the Germans and the Slavs. Even Dracula was a Jew, sucking the blood out of white European women. The parasites that they are. So like Shakespeare hid truth within his works, probably De Vere, so did Brothers Grimm, so did Afanasov, and John would know this. So Afanasov was a Christian, hiding these truths in his stories, and also tales about the lives of Jesus and Christian saints. So John goes to this very special book where he has his markers and a ticket stashed, and the reason for it all, the memory of his Helen. Love drives John Wick, rules, but not all follow them. This giant of a man tries to kill John early. Genesis 6-4, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. We still have a few on earth today. John is fighting a Nephilim, seed of the serpent. He uses whatever tools are in his surroundings to take out the bad guys. Here he uses his book and the back of a chair and gets the job done. Checking in with the Bowery King, we see he has gotten the phone call. Let it be known, the Bowery will honor the excommunicado. No help, no services of any kind. Thanks to the not-so-jolly giant, John has to seek the Continental's doctor with his last five minutes to get his wound sewn up. But he runs out of time. The good doctor helps him regardless and has John shoot him to cover up his actions. Consequences. John runs out into the night. Notice the coloring here. It's like the rainbow is with John. The arch is with the archer. He runs into some sort of antique store to try and get away from the hitmen. Notice Jesus in stained glass behind him. Another clue who John is symbolizing. They do some really good action work in the knife scene here. I'm sure this one made the males in the audience cringe. Matthew 5.29 And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. I think his right eye offended John. So we know how resourceful John is. We already saw him use a book to kill the giant. And now he uses a horse to kill this guy. He did it, this horse trick a couple times. He takes off on the horse. Gallops past this guy. Is that Chad Stahelski? Right there? Here's Chad and Keanu. Kind of looks like him, huh? John does some pretty crazy maneuvers on this horse. He rides until he gets to this old theater. On the marquee it says, Tale of Two Wolves. 
Is it to reflect this old Cherokee story? The white wolf is where John wants to be, but the high table keeps trying to pull him back into the black wolf. So tale of two wolves. An old Cherokee told his son, My son, there is a battle between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, inferiority, lies, and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The boy thought about it and asked, Grandfather, which wolf wins? The old man quietly replied, The one you feed. He shows the ticket lady his ticket to get inside. They know John. He is led to the theater where the director is watching one of the ballerinas dance. Notice her back. She has the cross as well. Seed of the woman. They are from the same tribe. You think your ticket is good after all the chaos you caused? The Ruska Roma are bound to the high table, and the high table stands above all. Notice the ticket is rosary beads. They are Christian. John sees with his right. I am Giordani Jovanovich. Giordani is John in Romani. But it is also Jordan, as in the River Jordan, where Christ was baptized. And his last name, Jovanovich, is a combination of Jovan, which also is a derivative of John, and Vich, or Vic, or Wick. So what we really get in Jordani Jovanovich is another way to say John Wick. If we look up the meaning for the name Jovanovich, we find that, however spelt, it is derived from the Biblical Hebrew Yochanan, which translates as, He who Jehovah has favored with the Son. By Jove, Jovanovich, John Wicca, as Zero would say. So John Wick is the anglicized name for Jardani Jovanovich. We then find out that John is a child of the Belarus. Bella means white and Rus means Russian. So Belarus means white Russian. It was the white Russians that the Jews killed in the Holodomor, the seed of the serpent killing Adamites of the seed of the woman. Did the survivors do the bidding of the high table in order to survive? An orphan of your tribe, John tells us. Were his parents killed in the Holodomor? Somehow you managed to get out, but here you are, back where you began. Notice the director is flanked by two Masonic pillars. Like Santino, Satan, D'Antonio, and John Wick too. Well, she did pledge her fealty to the high table. All of this for what? Because of a puppy? It wasn't just a puppy. Even if I wanted to, I can't help you, Jardani. The high table wants your life. How can you fight and win? How can you smash the mountains? How can you bury the ocean? How can you escape from the light? Of course you can go to the dark, but there in the dark too. The Tale of Two Wolves. So, Giordani, what do you want? Passage. Where to? Casablanca. The path to paradise begins in hell. You can never come home again. Excommunicado from the seed of the serpent, a.k.a. High Table. Excommunicado from the seed of the woman, the Belarus. In the meantime, the adjudicator shows up at the Continental. Notice how similar the adjudicator looks to Aries. I'm thinking of that producer's checklist again. Check. Non-binary. Man's law above God's law. The symbol on the marker looks like a variation of this. Order ab chaos. Order out of chaos. 
the very motto of the Masons. You can see how they put Christ on an even keel with Lucifer here. Ab is another word for God, and you have four letters to his left and four to his right. So they hold the same amount of weight. Order is Alpha, and Chaos is Omega. Ordo is right, and Chao is left. You can see the O, A, and C in the symbol. Also downward V is prominent. V for victory, V for vagina. They worship the feminine, or mother as opposed to the masculine, or the father, Yahweh. They take an elevator down. Elevators are symbolic of hell. I always think of Prince and his ride in the elevator. Where the adjudicator has a word with Winston. Notice the flames, like they are in hell. I've been of service for over 40 years under the table, serving the table, everything is under the table. You have one week to get your affairs in order. After that, a successor will be named. There are rules. That is the only thing that separates us from the animals, Winston finishes. She next pays a visit to the Bowery King. Now the Bowery in New York is basically the underworld, the seedy side of town comprised of prostitution, drug houses, and the homeless. The underbelly, the side of New York that remains hidden from most. The adjudicator is amused by the king's doves. You see them as rats with wings. I see them as the internet. No IP addresses. No digital footprint. Can't hack it. Can't track it. Can't trace it. Can you get a disease from it? Well, I don't recommend you eat one. On the contrary, in the Bible, Leviticus tells us that fowl that eat seeds, grains, and vegetation are clean animals, and thus the ones we are allowed to eat. Doves are a clean animal. We can eat dove. I'm not saying go out and eat dove. But it is good to know if the shit hits the fan and we are scrambling for food. She shows evidence of the king helping out John Wick by presenting the gun John used in getting to Santino. This, Kimber 1911. Was this particular model picked because it has 911 in it? We already had 911 appear in Chapter 2 on the clock. And now we have it appear in this chapter as well. Predictive programming is an event imminent, maybe? You gave John Wick seven bullets. The high table gives you seven days to settle your affairs. 77 is like 66. When we have two sevens, one stands for Lucifer and one for Satan, per the process church. They have a four pi or p system. Each P represents one of four gods they say they worship, being Jehovah, Lucifer, and Satan, with Christ being demoted to messenger status. The P's can be converted into sevens in numerology. So when they put two sevens together, it symbolizes their favorite gods, Lucifer and Satan. The process church would be just another branch of Judaism, just like the church of Satan. Pick your poison. They don't care which you pick as long as you pick one. Notice the tattoo on her neck. It is the real tattoo of the actress Asia Kate Dillon. It reads, Einfühlung, which is German for empathy. But this character doesn't have much empathy. She is the bringer of sorrow. She is a black wolf. And when we read the wiki on her, I have to roll my eyes. Sorry, my goodness. Asia Kate Dillon is an American actor, best known for their roles as Brandy Epps in Orange is the New Black, 
and Taylor Mason in Billions. Dylan is non-binary and uses singular they pronouns. Non-binary. Check. There will be no replacing me on the throne. I am the throne. I am the Bowery. Do not make the mistake in thinking you live outside the rules. No men do. Not until the system crashes. Yahweh let Satan rule for a time, but his time is almost up. Tick tock, tick tock, Satan. John made it to Casablanca and gets taken to the continental Morocco. Another opulent place where the moon eye flourishes. When John enters Sophia's suite, we notice the Hamza on the wall to his right. A Hamza, like an all-seeing eye, is a good luck charm for a Jew. Here we see Jennifer Aniston, Madonna, Nicole Richie, and Heidi Klum, each wearing one. What does that tell us about them? In this version, we see the Star of David on it. More confirmation who the Continental is subservient to. So John doesn't get the warmest greeting from Sophia. She shoots him in the chest. He reminds her of her blood oath. Just like the director and his ticket. They still have a little white wolf within. John and Sophia apparently have two very important things in common. They both have a loved one they are fighting for. For John in memory. For Sophia in the present, her daughter. And the second is her love of dogs. Do you like dogs, John? In contrast, Zero is a cat person. The adjudicator is busy hiring assassins to take out the ones who disobeyed. I have served. I will be of service. Notice Zero's two pillars. He first visits the director. Because she honored John's ticket, the table makes her pay. Her hands are pierced like Christ's on the cross. I have served. I will be of service. Like the adjudicator, Sophia also has a neck tattoo. It says in Arabic, This is the life on the right side. And on the other it says, I chose. This is the life I chose. We are given free will. We choose to be of service to God or service to self. Self here being the high table. John asks her to bring him to her old boss, Verada. She does only after he reminds her of her blood oath. She does so begrudgingly. Mr. Wick, do you know where the word assassin comes from? People argue, assassin, Asha Shem, followers of Asani, eaters of hashish. But others contend it comes from assassion meaning men who have faith and abide by their belief. It sounds noble until you contemplate what Barada's faith is in. He tells us, You see that coin? The first coin minted in this facility. He worships money, the moon eye. I seek to make amends for what I have done. I seek a meeting with the one that sits above the table, says John. I cannot help you find the elder. The elder is not a man you choose to find. He can only choose to find you. If you wish to speak with him, go to the edge of the desert and look up. Canis Minor, the dog that followed Orion through the sky. You follow the brightest star. Walk until you are almost dead, then keep walking. When you are on your last breath, he will find you, or he will not. Barada asks for one of Sophia's dogs as a gift, but when she refuses, he shoots it. In retaliation, she shoots him in the knee and lets her dog chew on his nuts. So the dog ended up being okay because it has a bulletproof vest. He shot my dog. 
I get it. But now, consequences. And they have to kill all of Barada's men. Awesome stunt work by the dogs, and Sophia proves to be the female version of John. So they drive out into the desert as far as they can go, where Sophia can still turn around and make it back. John does as Barada tells him, and walks until he is exhausted, and then walks some more. He walks on through the night, following the brightest star. Canis Minor means the smaller dog, so it too would be a dog star, like Canis Major. Remember, the dog star would be an anagram for the Tares God. So John has to follow the Tares God to find the head of the table, the one above the table. This would be their Lucifer. After visiting the director, Zero comes for the Bowery King and his men. Seven slashes for seven bullets after seven days. Crowley's 777. And when John can't walk anymore, when he is on the verge of death, he is found and brought to the one above the high table. But, ahem, uh this would not be the one above the high table. The one above the high table would be a Jew. Only a Jew could sit at the top of the Satanic Pyramid. But they want us to think it is a Muslim, just like Alex Jones pushes saying the Muslims run Hollywood. What a joke. The Muslims do not run Hollywood. That's hilarious. Also note that this high table would be in mockery of Christ's high table, his table with his twelve disciples. The seed of the serpent always takes the good symbolism for Christ and mirrors it, uses it for bad. Remember who these two seed lines are. It goes all the way back to the beginning. Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God's seed versus the devil's seed. That's what's playing out on earth. My son... How have you come to be so lost? Like he's God here, right? John is the son, S-U-N-S-O-N, -S in here, but the elder is not the father. So tell me, Jonathan, why do you wish to live? My wife, Helen, to remember her, to remember us. I can give you one last chance to earn a life, however, it might not be the life you wish. Complete a task for us, and your excommunicado will be reversed. Not free under the table, but bound to it for the rest of your days, says the elder. The cost of your life will be the death of others. The first will be the man you call Winston. I will serve. I will be of service. John cuts off his son finger on his left hand. But the real sacrifice for John is giving up his marriage ring, a memento of his beloved Helen. Why do I think John will get this ring back in another chapter? Maybe chapter 4? The first branding by the director cast him out. The second by the elder cast him back in. Notice the entry behind John. It looks like the mountain in the middle, the magnetic mountain. Like here on the Paramount logo, Paramount, foremost mountain, Parabellum, foremost war. Welcome back. Or is he back? I'm thinking I'm back. But not for the reason this high table thinks he's back for. Look at his dingles. Hard to take this guy seriously with those. Seriously. It reminds me of these silly Aussie dingle hats. And before we leave the elder, I just want to mention the ones that do have a hierarchy where a council of elders will control their king, their Lucifer, are the Jews. So John's back in New York. Notice when he gets off the subway, it says to watch the gap. 
We live in the gap, in the Ganunga Gap to be exact, the place in the middle, Midgard, where ice and fire met, creating this world. And we see it symbolized here in Central Station. Central Station, right? Like the center of the Earth. Notice the 42 again. Remember, that was the answer to the universe. It is the degree at which the rainbow arches. We see the domed arch above the flat Earth. Right? Right in front of John there. So Zero is finished with the director, finished with the Bowery King, and now his sights are set on John. John does a disappearing act here and flees. Zero and his minions chase John on motorcycles. He manages to take them out except for Zero, who follows him as he crashes in front of the Continental. Karen saves John from getting shot by Zero. In Greek mythology, Karen is the ferryman of Hades, who carries souls of the newly deceased across the river Styx that divided the world of the living from the world of the dead. It is interesting that Karen at the front desk is the one that takes the toll or token, right? Just like the ferryman does. Is the Continental like Hotel California? Once you check in, you can never leave? Zero hasn't learned what personal space is. I gotta tell you, I've been looking forward to meeting you for a long time. I'm a huge fan, John Wick. And so far, you haven't disappointed. Ha ha. I wonder how many times Keanu heard these same lines in real life. I'm sure a bazillion. Is that the dog? We're the same, you know. Both given the same gift. We're both masters of death. But John tells him, no, we are not the same. On the contrary, zero would be the alphabet equivalent of an O. O for Omega. As opposed to Alpha. We know Christ is both the Alpha and Omega. Revelation 22:13 I am alpha and omega the beginning and the end the first and the last But the Masons don't see it that way as I mentioned earlier they think Lucifer has a shot so they put Christ and Lucifer on an even footing Christ to them would be alpha and Lucifer omega so zero would be on team Lucifer taking a ride on that elevator to hell. To get to paradise, you have to go through hell. And he's seeing with his right there. John meets Winston in the room of glass. Seems like everyone is suffering from the consequences of their actions. Notice the Masonic black and white checkerboard in front of Winston. He is a mason making his chest move. You're not stepping down? No, I don't think I am. Then it's war. You're going to war with a high table. A skirmish. It's up to you to make a choice. What choice? You shoot me, you sell your soul. But I'll be alive and I can remember her. Until you die and as a servant of the high table. The real question is, who do you want to die as? As Baba Yaga, the last any man will see? Or as a man? who loved and was loved by his wife. It seems like Winston convinced John, but did he really? John is a man of heart. He has an affinity for Winston as a friend and does feel loyalty to him, just like he does to the memory of his wife. He has no love or loyalty for the high table. And John is very clever and thorough. Like a good chess game, he thinks a few moves ahead. No, John was never planning on being bound to the high table. He knew he has to go through hell to get out, and it started with that meeting with the elder to convince him he's back in. I'd like to change a designation. The Continental Hotel, New York. Deconsecrated. 
fringe character. Check. Are there files like these somewhere on every one of us? There is a law Congress passed in 2005 called the Real ID Act on recommendation of the 9-11 Commission. It says that to fly in 2020, you have to have a gold star on your driver's license. Have you heard about that? To get this star, they need all your papers. So yes, there is a file on each and every one of us, or at least there will be shortly. Under the consequences, your services are reinstated. What do you need? Guns, lots of guns. Guns, lots of guns. Winston grants his wish. If you want peace, prepare for war, it says in Latin on the symbol. Black buses carry backup for zero in the skirmish at the Continental. Winston tells Karen to set the mood. And so it goes from this to this, dark with the neon green hue. Like when Neo and Trinity were prepared for business and ready to attack. Notice the buildings even look similar. Tall stone structures with floor to ceiling windows. And Jonathan, do what you do best. Do what you do best, Keanu. And what's that? Hunt. If you want peace, prepare for war. While Winston and Dog wait patiently in the safe room, John, with the help of Karen, manages to kill them all, except for Zero and two of his pupils. John pursues Zero into the room with glass with the crystal skulls on display. Did they add these skulls to perpetuate this idea of them being relics of ancient Atlantis? with 12 here being representative of the 12 members of the high table. That was a mouthful. By John being smashed into them one by one, does this show the high table losing their grip on John? So these two assassins are apparently big fans of John and are more interested in fighting the legendary man than killing him. Notice the Carl F. Butcherer watch in the background. John gets the better of them, but because it was a gentleman's fight, he doesn't kill them. They are relieved. So it comes down to Zero, Omega, and Wick, Alpha, which is going to get Butcherer. Butchered, get it? And although we had flatter symbolism with watching the gap, and 42nd Street, Central Station, we have Ball Earth programming as well with the globe here. Is that on the checklist? Add a globe, check. Omega loses to Alpha. I would like to suggest a parlay. A parlay would be good. Zero is probably my favorite bad guy. Zero is, he is my favorite bad guy. We are high table, and we are New York City. But high table or New York City, you really have bad guys versus bad guys. Seed of the serpent versus seed of the serpent, right? What are we going to do about John Wick? He has to die. So it seems Winston decided this on the spot, and John is surprised. But I would say this is a ruse, and they decided ahead of time that this is what would happen. With John dying is the only way to free John. He already betrayed the high table when he agreed to fight for Winston. Remember, the elder said this was John's last chance to come back into the fold. So this was the only thing that could be done. Sorry, John. Don't see it any other way. And neither did John. Very well, gentlemen. The Continental is re-consecrated. Well played, sir. He doesn't answer Karen because it needs to be a secret between Winston and John. He is gone. A tragedy. You misunderstand. I mean, he is no longer on the street. I hope you understand the consequences if he survived, both from above and below. Baba Yaga 
Was it a smart move to let the Bowery King survive? Now they have a super pissed off enemy. Notice he is drinking orange Fanta. Orange is 33 in numerology. He has John brought to him. And dog. The king asks John if he can hear him and if he can to raise his hand. And then he laughs, seeing how John got cut by the high table as well, and has a hearty laugh. John signs for him to fuck off, Barry King. So the old boy keeps his hotel and you take the fall. Notice the Masonic pillow on the floor to his right. So I wouldn't trust the Bowery King if I was John. But he can work with him temporarily to reach a common goal. Under the table is where shit gets done. And they'll learn if you cut a king, you better cut him to the quick. Are you pissed, John? Yeah. Ho ho! John Wick Chapter 4. Here we come. Will John be taking the war to the high table? I think we'll see the tables turn. Take care. How you doing, John? Raise a hand if you can hear me, John. You look as bad as I feel. Oh, shit. They took a finger. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. <laughs> oh, John fucking Wick. So, the old boy keeps his hotel and you take the fall. But this high table shit is seven cuts. <laughs> and they about to find out if you cut a king. You better cut him to the quick. How do you feel? Cause I am really pissed off. I ask you, John. You pissed John. Are you? <laughs>